Specific pins in the FPGA are used during configuration. Some pins act differently depending upon their configuration mode. For example, the clock or C clock pin is an output in some modes while it is an input in other configuration modes. Some pins are only used in specific configuration modes as well. Now this is a little challenging because each configuration scheme can differ so much. That's because each pin may or may not be used in different configuration techniques. This is why the data sheet and the user guide for each FPGA discusses each configuration scheme in detail. In fact, the user guide covers each configuration technique in more detail than we're going to provide here. So remember to review the section on your chosen configuration scheme. As I mentioned earlier, the mode pins define to the FPGA the mode selected. There are three mode pins and they are inputs to the FPGA. The program pin is an input pin that is active low. It initiates the configuration process. So if you're going to reconfigure the device after it has already been programmed, then you will have to toggle this input pin to start reconfiguration all over again. The clock pin is an input or an output pin depending on your configuration scheme. Note that if it is an output, the clock can run at up to 100 megahertz depending on the device you choose, but will default to a much slower rate. If you want to modify the configuration rate, you set the config rate attribute in the BitGen program. So check the configuration user guide if you want to modify this. The init pin has multiple functions. At the start of configuration, init goes low, signaling that the FPGA's memory is being cleared. After clearing, it is released to be pulled high by an external resistor. Later, when the FPGA is loading its bitstream, init can go low, indicating that the bitstream has failed its CRC check and the configuration is being aborted. The CRC check is a checksum that indicates whether the bitstream has been corrupted. The done pin indicates the completion of the configuration process. It's bidirectional so the user can delay the startup sequence. After configuring the FPGA, the starting of the FPGA is often controlled by the user to control the releasing of the entire FPGA system to operate. On a side note, in case you don't know, BitGen is the bitstream generation utility included with the ISE software. It is used to create a bitstream from the implemented design and is used for configuring your device. Other important configuration pins are the data in pin, which is used to load in the serial configuration data. The data out pin is used to output the bitstream to the next device in case the user has built a daisy chain into the FPGA system. A daisy chain, as we'll talk, discuss later, is used to save PROMs or other memory components. It allows the user to store the bitstreams of multiple FPGAs in one memory component. To program multiple FPGAs in this way, the configuration scheme has to be configured to pass the data through F each FPGA once it has been programmed. Now we'll talk more about this in the FPGA Configuration 2 REL. Some of the configuration pins are dual purpose pins. That means after configuration is complete, they become normal user I.O. pins. Users will sometimes prohibit the use of these pins as I.O. pins by using the pin ahead utility to prohibit those pins. Check your device's data sheet or configuration user guide to determine which configuration pins are dual purpose. These are all the currently supported configuration schemes for all of Xenox's FPGAs. There are serial and parallel modes. Parallel modes are inherently faster even though they may operate at the same speed since they configure the device a byte at a time. The primary advantages and disadvantages include debugging time, debugging effort, cost, and speed of loading the bitstream. Configuring with JTAG is most frequently used when debugging a design. It is always recommended that customers include a JTAG configuration path so they can debug their design in system. No external control logic is necessary since the FPGA has a built-in JTAG chain and the external control logic is provided by the JTAG cable. Master Serial is perhaps the easiest configuration technique to, be, to debug since the FPGA configures itself 
This is the easiest to debug, but requires the user to purchase a serial PROM or a serial flash, such as the Xilinx platform flash. Slave Serial uses external control logic that the user must design. This control logic has to feed the bitstream to the FPGA from whatever external data source the system has. Many customers store their data in a PROM or other memory resource in this case. SPY configuration mode is new and requires the user to purchase a serial peripheral interface flash PROM. The benefit is that this configuration uses a competitive SPY PROM rather than another means to store the bitstream. It is also possible to use the SPY PROM to store software code in case the user is building an embedded application. This is a relatively simple configuration scheme to debug since the control logic, again, is already a part of the FPGA. There are several parallel modes which enable faster configuration than serial modes. Master Select Map uses the FPGA configuration logic to be used and uses a parallel flash, such as the platform flash, to load the data a byte at a time. Slave Select Map allows the user to customize their configuration control logic and still load data a byte at a time. Note that the Slave Select Map also supports a BY32 data line implementation when you target a Vertex 5 or a Vertex 6 FPGA. BPI, or Byte Wide Peripheral Interface, supports the use of an industry standard BPI flash component. It loads the data in parallel, so it is a faster configuration option than using the serial peripheral interface. BPI has the added advantage of allowing the user to store their software code with their configuration bitstream on a single flash device. Note that SPY and BPI are supported with Xilinx's newest FPGAs, including Spartan 3E, Spartan 6, Vertex 5, and Vertex 6.